Are you ready to master React.js? In this tutorial, we're diving deep into essential concepts to help you build powerful React applications. Stick around till the end. By the end of this video, you will have a better understanding of the following topics. Introduction to React. Essential tools. ES6 basics. Understanding the DOM and virtual DOM. Setting up and creating a React app. Components in React. Props and state. React hooks like useState, useEffect, and useRef. Let's begin with introduction. Imagine, you're building a website, and every time you change a small thing, the entire page reloads. That's irritable, right? Well, React comes to the rescue. React is a JavaScript library used to build super-fast, interactive, and dynamic user interfaces. Basically, it helps developers create web apps that feel smooth, like butter. So, who's the mastermind behind React? It's Facebook, now Meta. Back in 2013, Facebook engineers wanted a better way to make their apps faster and more interactive. And then boom, React was born, and today, it's used by giants like Instagram, WhatsApp, Netflix, and many more. All right, now that we know why React is awesome, let's get our tools ready. First things first, you need a browser. I prefer to use Chrome. The second thing you need is a code editor, and I recommend Visual Studio Code because it comes with lots of benefits, like the ability to use various extensions, manage Git repositories directly, and much more. So, go to Google and search for Visual Studio Code. Then, go to the download page and download it according to your system. I'm using Windows here, so I have already downloaded it. Finally, we need Node.js. But hold up, React isn't built with Node.js. So why do we need it? Well, Node.js gives us NPM, Node Package Manager, which is like an app store for developers. It lets us install libraries, manage dependencies, and run development servers. So, download and install Node.js from nodejs.org. Once installed, open your terminal and type node-v to check node version and npm-v to check npm version. All right, before we dive into React, there's one thing you need to know, ES6, that is ECMAScript 6. But wait, I've already made a video on ES6 where I break down all the important concepts. So if you haven't watched that yet, go check it out first. Link is in the description. For now, let's do a super quick recap of the most important ES6 features that we'll use in React. Forget where we use let and const now. Where let is block scoped, hoisted, cannot be redeclared but can be reassigned. And const is block scoped, hoisted, cannot be redeclared or reassigned. Arrow functions, short and sweet functions, less typing, more coding. Destructuring and spread operator, simplifies objects and arrays. Modules, use import and export for easy code management. Before starting any coding, we need to understand what the DOM and virtual DOM are, because React uses the virtual DOM to build web apps. So, what is the DOM? DOM stands for Document Object Model. It's basically the browser's representation of the HTML structure of your web page. Think of it as a tree where each node is an element on your page, like a heading, button, or dev. When a page is loaded, the browser creates the DOM, and you can interact with it using JavaScript to change the content, structure, or styling of the page. So, if you click a button and change the text on the page, you're interacting with the actual DOM. Now, let's talk about virtual DOM. Think of the virtual DOM as a lightweight copy of the real DOM that React keeps in memory. Instead of directly changing the real DOM every time something updates, React first updates the virtual DOM. Once React has the new virtual DOM, it compares it with the previous version using something called reconciliation. Then, it only updates the real DOM with the parts that have actually changed. So, now we've got the basics down. Let's actually start building. Firstly, you need to have Node.js installed, if you miss that step, make sure to install it. Step 1, open your terminal and type, npx create react app and your app name, I'm naming it, first app. Wait, what's this npx thing? Well, npx is like a shortcut to run packages without installing them globally. The installation will take some time, so let's skip the video until then. Step 2. Now, open your project in VS Code. You can directly open from VS Code or, through the terminal, navigate to your project folder and type code space full stop. Now, before we get all crazy building things, let's take a quick tour of the folder structure so you know where everything lives. Here's what's inside our project. Public folder. 
This folder is where all your static stuff goes. It holds index.html, which is where React starts running your app. SRC folder. This is the fun zone, that is where all your React components live. In this index.js file, it is the entry point. This is where React starts and connects to index.html. App.js file. It is the main component. This is where you start building your UI. Node modules folder. All the cool packages you need, like React, live here. Don't touch it, just let it do its thing. Package.json. This file keeps track of all your dependencies, scripts, and settings. Kind of like the brain of your app. Step 3. Now, let's launch the app and see magic happen. To run this app, you can find the start script in the package.json file under the script object command, which runs the React script. To execute this command, we use npm. So, open the terminal from here and type npm start. So, our project is running on localhost, port 3000. Let's open it. The page you're seeing is the default one that comes pre-built. We'll remove it and create our own. Now, let's go back to our editor, and we'll remove some files that we don't need. Go to the index.js file and remove these sections, as we don't need them for now. Since we have removed the report web vitals function, we will also delete its file. Next, delete the setup tests.js file as well. Now, go to the app.js file, remove this entire section, and also delete these two imports along with their respective files. Now, let's add a heading in the app.js file, save it, and check the result. Similarly, we will create our own custom design components and use them in the app.js file. So now, we've got our React app set up. Let's start building some components. In React, there are two ways to write components. Functional components and class components. But today, we're going all in on functional components. But why? Because they're simpler, cleaner, and with React hooks, they're just as powerful as class components. No need to complicate things. Class components are more complex and use this to manage state and lifecycle methods, but we're not diving into that today because functional components are the future of React. You can check the basics of class components in React's official documentation. Find the link in the description. Let's jump to functional components. These are simple JavaScript functions that return JSX. If you're not familiar with JSX, it stands for JavaScript XML, which allows you to write HTML-like syntax within JavaScript. For example, in the app.js file, the app function is a functional component written in JSX. Let's create our first custom component. Go to the src folder and create a new file. Name it whatever you want, but I'm naming it greeting.jsx. A couple of things to remember for naming. Your file name must start with a capital letter. Use the .jsx file extension. We will write a functional component here, and there's a shortcut for it. Just type RFC, and a suggestion will appear. Click on it, and boom. The code is generated. However, for beginners, I recommend writing it out manually to understand it better. Now, let's add a simple heading to it and save the file. After that, we'll use this component in the app.jsx file. Now, let's check the result. One more thing to note, React automatically refreshes when any changes are made. Awesome, right? One of the most powerful things about React is component reusability. Once you create a component, you can reuse it anywhere and as many times as you want. This makes your code super clean and maintainable. Now, let's talk about props. Props, short form of properties. They are how we pass data from one component to another. Think of them like arguments you pass into a function or like HTML attributes, so they allow you to customize a component. For example, let's say we want to take the user's name, and in the greeting component, we want to display a personalized message with that name. So, now in the app component, where it's being called, we'll add a prop, like name and pass a value to it. Then, we go to the greeting component and catch this prop using curly braces and the prop name. After that, we can use this name in the component. Okay, now that we've got some basic components down, it's time to talk about one of the most powerful things in React, React hooks. But don't worry, hooks are not as complicated as they sound. They're just a way to make your functional components more powerful without turning them into class components. So, what is a hook? Well, a hook is like a special function that lets you hook into React features. 
like state and life cycle methods, in functional components. Think of it like adding superpowers to your component without changing its nature. You'll better understand if we see it with an example. So, let's dive into the most used hook, useState. If you're building an app, chances are you'll be dealing with state. In simple terms, state is just data that can change over time like variables. And with useState, we can keep track of that data in our component. So, how do we use it? Let's create a component named counter. Open it and define the component inside it. Then use it in the app.js file. Now we create a state using the useState hook. This hook returns two things, the state itself and a function used to update that state. We catch them using square brackets, where the first position will hold the state, and the second position will hold the function that updates the state, also known as the setter function. Conventionally, we name the setter function by adding set before the state name. Now, in the useState brackets, we set the initial value of the state, just like we do with a variable. So, for now, we set its value to zero, so our counter will start from zero. Now, let's create two buttons for incrementing and decrementing the count, along with a label to display the current count. On the buttons on click event, we will call the setter function to increment the value by one. Similarly, for the minus button, we will use the setter function to decrement the count by one. Save it. Take a look at the output now. All right, we've learned about use state to manage data inside a component. But what if we need to do something after a component renders? Like fetching data, updating the title, or setting up timers. That's where use effect comes in. In simple words, use effect lets us run code when a component renders or when certain values change. It's used for things like fetching data from an API, or like updating the document title. It's like telling React, hey, after page rendering, do this task. Come on, let's jump into the implementation. To use use effect, simply write use effect, and you'll get a suggestion to import it. Go ahead and do that. Use effect takes two things, a function that needs to be executed and a dependency array, which determines when the function should run. Let's explore three different implementations of use effect. First, let's add a console.log statement to this function, so we can verify that it's working. If you don't provide anything in the second parameter and only pass the function, it will execute on every render, and this is the default behavior. Save it. And let's see the output. Notice that every time we refresh the page, the component re-renders, and in the console, it prints function run successfully each time. Second, if you pass an empty array as the dependency, the function runs only once when the component mounts, that is, on the initial render. So, when you refresh the page, function run successfully won't log every time. It will only print on the first render. Third implementation, if you add a variable, like count inside the dependency array the function will run in two cases first when the component mounts and second whenever the count value changes you can see this in action each time you click the plus or minus button the function gets called because the count state is updating additionally you can include multiple variables in the dependency array if needed all right we've learned about use state to manage data and use effect for side effects but what if we need to directly access and modify a DOM element? Here comes in useRef. useRef is like a shortcut to grab an element in React without causing a re-render. Think of it as a way to directly access an element just like we do with document.getAlementById in vanilla JavaScript. Let's see it in action. Imagine we want an input box to be automatically focused when the page loads. Here's how we do it. To create a reference, we will use the useRef hook which returns an object with a current property. We will store this in a simple variable, initializing it with null, and then pass this variable to the ref attribute of the input box. This way, the reference to the input box is directly accessed through this ref. Next, we will use the focus function on the current value of this ref inside use effect with an empty array as the dependency. This ensures that when the page renders, the input box will automatically gain focus. Save it and see that when we refresh, the focus is automatically set to the input box. And that's a wrap on our deep dive into React.js. You've learned the basics and some really important concepts. Also, be sure to check out the React documentation. I've dropped the link in the description. I hope this gives you a solid foundation in React. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome tech tips and tutorials coming your way.